Hi, my name is Richard Parker. I'd like to introduce our review article entitled Optic Nerve Sheath Meningiomas, Prevalence, Impact and Management Strategies. Optic nerve sheath meningiomas are rare benign neoplasms of the meninges surrounding the optic nerve. They classically occur in females in their fifth decade. The textbook presentation of a triad of vision loss, optic atrophy and optociliary shunt vessels observed on fundoscopy is actually quite rare. In fact, these patients have highly variable signs of presentation. In particular, the presenting vision varies widely from completely normal through to total blindness. These tumours can arise from within the orbit or can begin intracranially and spread to involve the optic nerve anywhere along its course. Bilateral tumours can occur, but they only comprise a small percentage of cases. Pediatric optic nerve sheath meningiomas are extremely rare, but when they do occur, they're strongly associated with neurofibromatosis too. Now, diagnosis of these tumours is challenging, given their variable presentation. Sectional imaging, particularly T1-weighted, fat-suppressed, contrast-enhanced MRI of the orbits, is the standard method for diagnosis. The tumours are usually visible on CT as well, incidental diagnosis is not uncommon. Other imaging modalities aren't used widely and are for specialised applications only. Functional tests such as multifocal visual evoked potentials are now finding new applicability in the diagnosis and monitoring of these tumours. Diagnosis by way of tissue biopsy however carries a high risk of blindness if it's of limited use. Now, although the mortality rate from optic nerve sheath meningiomas is practically zero, these tumours can blind or disfigure patients. But their natural history varies widely, anywhere from long-term stability through to an aggressive, almost malignant course. What's more, the treatment of these lesions can lead to vision loss itself and cause significant other morbidity. As a result of this, management of these patients can be very challenging. If treatment is to be pursued, there are several options available. Radiotherapy is the most commonly employed treatment modality. It's generally superior to the other options available. In most studies, more than 80% of patients treated with radiotherapy show stable or improved symptoms of follow-up. It doesn't seem to matter exactly which radiotherapy technique is used, as modern methods are all roughly equivalent in terms of outcomes. And while acute side effects such as localised alopecia and erythema are common, long-term toxicities, including vision loss, either from radiation, retinopathy or optic neuropathy, or even pituitary dysfunction, are relatively rare and they're usually dose-related. Surgery for these tumours generally results in blindness due to a shared blood supply between the tumour and the optic nerve. Partial resections and nerve decompressions can have similarly poor outcomes. Surgery does retain a role, however, for those patients who already have severe vision loss, those at risk of posterior or contralateral tumour spread, those with severe orbital disfigurement, or where the diagnosis is uncertain and the tissue biopsy is required. Other treatment options, such as localised and systemic chemotherapy, have shown promise in select patients and case reports, but in general, they're not standard therapy for most patients. In some cases, Observation is the most reasonable management option, particularly in patients who present with normal vision. However, while there have been instances of patients remaining stable or even spontaneously improving over the long term with observation alone, this is quite rare. The usual management paradigm, however, employs observation until a deterioration in vision is observed, at which point radiotherapy is usually offered. So, in conclusion, we provide a review of the recent literature and evidence on the prevalence, impact and management strategies for optic nerve sheath meningiomas. We hope our article provides you with useful insights into these rare tumours and their management. Thank you.